Hey everyone, welcome back. Now a lot of you guys reach out to me asking me for some guidance and help on your job search. And most of you guys who reach out to me, I can categorize you into one of the three categories. Number one, you are a fresher and you're looking for your very first job. Number two, you are already working for a few years, but you're working in a non-technical role. And now you want to get into the technical side of things. Uh, so you think maybe becoming a data analyst or a business analyst in the field of data science or data analytics would be a good starting point. And number three, you are having a career gap. That is, you worked for a few years previously and then you had to take a break from your career due to some personal reasons and now you want to start working again and you think getting into a technical role would be good maybe as a data analyst or some sort of analyst. Now generally, when anyone reaches out to me, I would recommend them to watch my previous video where I have explained in detail all the steps that you need to do in order to get your very first job as a data analyst. And that video itself is actually very good. It's one of the most successful videos on my channel. And I know it has helped a lot of you guys to understand what you need to do in order to become a data analyst. But there is a problem. The problem is, if you are someone who belongs to one of the three categories that I mentioned previously, then for those people, if someone tells you that you need to learn all the different skills like Python, SQL, Tableau, Power BI, statistics, you need to build a portfolio projects, you need to have portfolio website, you need to have a resume, you need to have LinkedIn, you need to have good connections and so much more. If you are told all of these things to do, and if you are someone who's coming from a non-technical background or a fresher or with a career gap, then you would be very scared. And even before you could start your journey of learning and becoming a data analyst, just by looking at the different things that you need to do in order to become a data analyst would kind of might scare you off and it might reduce your confidence and you might question yourself if this is something that is fit for you and if you can actually achieve this because there is so much to learn and there is so much to do, right? And that is why I wanted to come up with this video where I wanted to explain in the most easiest way, that is the most easiest step or the most fastest steps that you can take to become a data analyst. So in this video, I'm going to tell you only two skills, okay? Only two skills that you need to learn to become a data analyst. And I'm going to tell you how you can learn these two skills. That is, I'm going to tell you the platforms that I would recommend for you to learn these two skills. And I'm also going to tell you how much time you should be spending to learn these two skills. And once you have learned these two skills, I'm also going to tell you at the end of the video, what are the additional things that you can do in order to give yourself the best chance to become a data analyst or to get your first data analyst job. So if you are a fresher, or you are coming from a non-technical background, or you are having a career gap and you want to become data analyst the fastest way and the easiest way, then the two skills that you need to learn are SQL and Power BI. So these are the only two skills that I would highly recommend that you get started with. And these two skills should actually be pretty good enough for you to give you a job as a data analyst. Now I know a lot of you guys might be thinking, what only SQL and Power BI? What about Tableau? Okay, what about Excel? What about Python? What about statistics, right? Now I'm going to explain all of that in a short while. But first of all, let me tell you why do you need to learn SQL and Power BI? Okay, so before I can tell you that, you first need to understand what exactly does a data analyst do. A data analyst is expected to extract the data, analyze the data, maybe clean the data, and then draw some meaningful insights from that data, right? Now, in order to do all of this, the two skills that you need are SQL and Power BI. So you need SQL so you can connect to the database, extract the data, uh, query the data so that you can have a look at the data. Maybe you need to clean the data, you need to analyze the data, and maybe you will be able to build a small report using that data right? Now, once you have done all of that, next thing is you need to showcase whatever insights that you have, whatever you have found or whatever problem that you have solved using this data, you need to showcase this into a stakeholder, to a stakeholder, right? Now, when you showcase your data to a stakeholder, you cannot just showcase it in an Excel file or in your database, right? You need to present it in a more beautiful manner, maybe by building dashboards or by doing visualization. So even a non-technical person with no technical skills will be able to look at that dashboard and able to understand what you're trying to convey 
using that data right and in order to build this dashboard and in order to build this visualization you will need to learn power bi because using power bi you can basically visualize your data and showcase it in a more beautiful way so even if you have a very simple report you can showcase it like something extraordinary and the stakeholder might actually get impressed and might be able to clearly understand what you're trying to convey now to all of those people who are thinking why power bi why not tableau now the thing is Power BI is much simpler to learn than Tableau and if you had learned Power BI and in future if you want to learn Tableau it's going to be much simpler for you to learn Tableau or for that matter any other visualization tool. That is the reason I would recommend Power BI first and the second point is Power BI is owned by Microsoft and most of the companies today are using some sort of Microsoft products and the thing is when a company purchases a Microsoft product Microsoft would generally maybe not force but would generally give you pretty good offer to purchase all the other products that Microsoft offers so there is a very high chance that your company would already be having access to Power BI. So if you already know Power BI, you kind of give yourself the best chance to get hired. Okay, so that is the reason why I recommend SQL and Power BI and maybe not Tableau. If you are learning Tableau, well and good, but my recommendation is start with SQL first and then move on to Power BI, only these two skills. Okay, now some of you might be thinking, what about Python and what about uh, statistics, right? And the thing is, if you know Python and statistics, it is fantastic. You give yourself a very good chance of getting shortlisted in much more companies, but it is not mandatory. Okay, the most mandatory skill to become a data analyst, I would say is SQL and Power BI. And after that, if you want to learn Python, uh, statistics and Tableau and anything else, that is all up to you. But get started with SQL and Power BI. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will be thinking, what about Excel? Excel is used everywhere, right? But the thing is, I'm not including Excel as part of this skill set because Excel is actually very simple, okay? Even if you start learning Excel now, within the next 24 hours, I can guarantee you that you will be comfortable with basic Excel. And I'm not talking about all the complex things that you can do in Excel. I'm talking about can you read the data in an Excel file? You should just know how to filter the data, how to apply some simple formulas, right? And all of this in Excel, you can learn within 24 hours. You don't need to... I I do not want to include that as part of a separate skill set, okay? And that is why SQL and Power BI are the only two skills that you need to learn to get started. Of course, once you know this, you can learn more and you can learn more tools and more skills uh, with time. Now, I have told you the two skills that you need to learn, that is fine. But how do you learn these two skills, okay? Now, I'm going to give you my recommendations on the platforms that you can use to learn these skills. Let's start with SQL. Now, for SQL, the platform that I would recommend is learnsql.com. Now, this is a platform that is dedicated for SQL courses. So, if you go into the courses section, I think you can find over 50 different SQL courses. So you have courses uh, for the absolute beginners. So there is a course like SQL from A to Z. And if you're getting started with SQL, this is the course that I would recommend that you take. So if I just open this course and if I just go here, you can see that this course kind of starts from the absolute basics. It goes into all the SQL functions and then all the DML operations that you need. And then it also tells you about reporting and then some advanced concepts like window functions, recursion group by extensions etc okay so if you are starting from absolute scratch then sql from a to z is the course that i would recommend but of course there are so many different courses that are available on this uh, platform okay so you can find all the different courses depending on what you want to learn uh, all available in learnsql.com and this is a platform that i would recommend and let's say you are someone who wants to learn sql based on specific uh, rdbms so you have the options of learning from MySQL, PostgreSQL or SQL Server in this platform. But my recommendation is, let's say you want to learn SQL from scratch and you're confused about which RDBMS you should choose. I would say that don't worry about which RDBMS you need to choose because once you learn SQL in any RDBMS, you will be able to apply your knowledge of that SQL into any other RDBMS, okay? Because 80 to 90% of the SQL used in all the RDBMS are the same. There will be hardly 10 or 20% difference in some of the functions and uh, very few syntactical differences that you can easily grasp uh, if you have knowledge of any SQL. 
okay so don't worry about rdbms uh, my recommendation is if you are learning uh, sql in mysql or microsoft sql server or in oracle or in uh, postgresql then you should be pretty good any one of these rdbms is actually pretty good my personal favorite is postgresql and how i would recommend you to use this platform is once you come to the courses section and if you are planning to learn sql from scratch i would recommend this course as i already told you and other than that what you can do is you can just uh, filter uh, some commands here so so if I just uncheck the practice SQL, you will get all the different sections of basically learning the SQL concepts. You can choose any of these courses. And once you have learned the concepts, then what you can do is you can just click on this practice SQL. These are all the different courses where you can practice writing SQL queries. So each of these courses would have a lot of different SQL queries uh, that you can solve and this can actually improve your SQL skills. Okay. So learn SQL concepts first and then try to practice SQL using any of these courses. Once you have done all of this, then what I would recommend is go into the Stata Scratch website. Now, Stata Scratch is a fantastic platform for practicing SQL queries. Here you can find some free uh, SQL queries to practice as well. Just go on coding questions and you can choose either PostgreSQL or MySQL. Even if you have learned using some other RDBMS, don't worry. You can just practice using any of this SQL mentioned here and you can choose the free uh, SQL questions and try to practice it. And once you have practiced all the free questions, you can then maybe purchase a subscription and practice more interview questions. It's a very fantastic platform for for solving a real SQL interview queries and I would highly recommend this. Okay, so this is how you can learn SQL. Go to learnsql.com and learn all the SQL concepts and then try to practice SQL by taking up any of this uh, practice SQL courses. Okay, once you are done with this, then you can go to Strata Scratch and you can solve real SQL interview queries on a Strata Scratch. Okay, so once you have learned SQL, the next thing that you need to learn is Power BI. Now for learning Power BI, the only course that I would recommend is the course that is present in uh, codebasics.io. It's a fantastic course and I can guarantee you that if you can complete this course on Power BI, you would be very confident in Power BI and by the time you complete this course, you would have already solved a project, basically done a project which you can actually post it in your resume. Okay. Now the best thing about this course is that it's not just a course which teaches you about Power BI, it kind of teaches you on how to work as a data analyst okay because there is a lot of uh, additional things that is present in this course so they take you step by step on how you would be getting a uh, work as a data analyst how you would receive an email how you should be responding to the email and how you should uh, start thinking about how to solve that particular problem how to showcase your problem uh, to the stakeholders etc etc so this is a fantastic course for anyone who wants to become a data analyst you will learn power bi and also you will learn a lot of useful skills and uh, tips that you need to become a good data analyst so now let's say you have learned SQL and you have learned Power BI. Now, how much time do you need to spend to learn these two skills? Now, from my own experience and my recommendation is that start with learning SQL and keep one month for learning SQL. So every day, try to spend two hours for learning SQL for up to a month. And I think in one month, you will not only learn all the SQL concepts, you will also be able to practice SQL uh, in learnsql.com platform as well as in a Stata Scratch platform. So two hours per day for one month, I think it's more than enough time to learn SQL. Now, once you have done that, next thing that you need to do is you need to spend again two hours per day for the next one month in doing uh, this Power BI course in codebasics.io. Okay. So if you can spend just two hours per day for one month, I think it's more than enough time to complete this course and also to complete the project that is involved in this course. Okay. And you can straight away put this project in your resume as well. So in total, one plus one, that is two months to learn the skills that you need to become a data analyst. Okay. Now, once you have done this, what next? Okay. So you cannot just learn these skills and then keep quiet and expect the recruiters to reach out to you and give you a job, right? It's never going to happen. You still need to take the next step to build a resume and to reach out to the recruiters on LinkedIn, uh, especially to get your job, right? But additionally, what you can do is you can go to codebasics.io, okay, the same platform where you will find the Power BI course. And here recently I have seen that they have started adding this resume projects. Okay. So if you click on this resume project and and as far as I know that every month they will be adding new projects uh, in this particular section. They have already added one of the projects as you can see here. It's a, 
provide insights to revenue team in hospitality domain okay and i know one of my contacts in linkedin ashish actually completed this project he had recently learned sql and power bi and then he was able to complete this project and he has actually done a very good job he shared it with me in linkedin and he has also shared it with everyone in linkedin and he has got a very good feedback so what I would recommend is once you learn SQL and Power BI, go to Code Basics, uh, choose this resume project, and I believe every month you will have new projects added here. Currently, I can see one project. Try to complete this project. Okay. Anyone who understands basics of SQL and basics of Power BI, who has learned Power BI from Code Basics, I am sure will be able to so do this uh, project. So complete this project, and once you have completed this project, you can showcase this project in your resume. Okay, so you will have one this project and the other project that you have already done using the Power BI uh, course. Okay, so once you have these two projects, you can put it in your resume and I think you'll also get certification from uh, Code Basics for your Power BI course and also you'll get certifications uh, for your SQL course done in uh, learnsql.com. So once you have these two certifications and once you have done these two projects, you can put it in your resume and if you want a resume uh, format, I have already made a previous video about resume format, you can probably follow that format and once you have done that, just try to be active in LinkedIn, try to post your uh, projects in LinkedIn, try to build connections and try to apply for jobs. Okay. Hopefully with this, you will give yourself the best chance to get your first data analyst job. Okay. So I hope this video was helpful. You got some insights. So if you are from non-technical background, if you are a fresher or if you are having a career gap, just learn SQL from learnsql.com and practice SQL also in learnsql.com and also you can practice it in Stata Scratch and then try to learn Power BI using the Power BI course in codebasics.io. Once you have learned these two skills, go to codebasics.io, complete the resume project and put that uh, project in your resume, uh, become active in LinkedIn, showcase the projects that you have done, apply for jobs and hopefully very soon you will be able to get your first data analyst job. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful and if it was, I would love to hear your success stories on my LinkedIn as well as in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.